Hidalgo is mildly higher today in a weak market after its uh, US subsidiary Novelis files for an IPO on Wall Street, eyeing a fundraise of nearly a billion dollars. Brokerage firm CLSA issues a buy call on the stock. IRCTC slums despite good revenue growth in quarter four as margins come under pressure across segments. The overall margin contracts by 220 basis points on a year-on-year -year basis. Aditya Birla fashion is under pressure on the back of its fourth quarter earnings as demand remains weak. The stock also entered the FNO ban list. NBCC surges after delivering a good set of quarter four numbers. The revenue grows by 43% on a year-on-year -year basis while margins expand over 200 basis points. You have a bunch of stocks doing extremely well to earnings. We have Campus Activewear up around 3%, 13%, 3M India up around a percent and a half, and Brigadent also up around 2% on the back of their fourth quarter numbers. Hello and welcome to Chart Pastors. I'm Nigel Souza. Joining me as always is Mangla Malu. Well, as we speak, the markets are a tinge of red, as you can see. We have moved to the low point of the day. But as we have been mentioning, it appears that buyers are sitting on the sidelines ahead of a big event. It's not that the selling intensity mm -hmm. is uh, aggravating. For the time being, we're still holding the 22,700 mark on the Nifty. On the Nifty Bank, that 47,650 to 47,000, uh, uh, beg your pardon, those are the crucial levels that you're looking at. We're trading a little below that mark. Manglam. Nigel, you know, if we have to bounce back, it has to be from current levels itself. Yeah. We'll wait by for any further clarity. Post events are taken out as well. The second half for the Nifty Bank uh, will be extremely crucial. Like Nigel pointed out, 48,650 to 48,700 would be an important support because of the put writing that we've seen at important levels for the Nifty Bank as well. It is the Nifty Bank monthly options expiry. The mid caps, however, are uh, doing a little better than the big caps. So the mid cap index is down just about a quarter percent. And remember this after the mid-cap index underperformed over the last couple of trading sessions. So this is something that we'll keep an eye out on a healthy sign from the mid-cap index not falling as much as the frontline end of things. So in this wobbly market, let's get you some ideas for profit coming in from our colleagues at Money Control Pro. And today we have Bharat joining in with a stock that he's been talking about. Today's ideas will be Talent Company Limited. The company posted strong 20% top end growth in quarter four, driven by the key jewelry business. Healthy new buy growth as well as increase in the average realizations boosted the top-end performance. While the top-end growth was strong, EBITDA margins declined by about 100 basis points YOM. This is due to higher discounting owing to increased competitive intensity in the jewelry business. Titan is aggressively expanding its network presence across the jewelry sub-brands, that is Kanish, Mia, Zoya, and Caratland. The company is also renovating existing stores, which will boost the overall performance. The jewelry market in India is witnessing an accelerated shift towards the organized segment. This is owing to the mandatory hallmarking regulations as well as increased preference for the branded products. Titan, which is the leading organized player, having a prime India presence, would be key beneficiary of the same. We expect the EBITDA margins in the jewelry business to remain steady, as higher discounting would be offset by benefits due to operating leverage. Titan is poised to deliver healthy earnings growth over the medium term. At the current market price, the stock is trading at a PE of 58 times FR26 earnings. Investors can understand the stock. All right, so we have, uh, you know, a stock on our radar, which is Titan. And at the same time, you know, at the bottom of your screen, important clarification coming in from the Adani group. This is them saying that they've categorically denied the baseless speculation on uh, news reports that were there this morning, that they are in talks with uh, the management of Paytm, Vijay Shekhar Sharma, to perhaps go ahead and pick up a stake. And there have been, you know, vehement denials from both sides. So, uh, Vijay Shekhar Sharma, uh, as well as uh, Paytm, has informed the exchanges, informed our colleagues as well. Ritu has uh, been telling us that, you know, Paytm says that news is speculative and not happening. At the same time, Adani Group also has said to CNBC TV18, and these are strong words, Nigel. Yeah. They've categorically denied on uh, this media report saying that all these talks are, uh, you know, baseless. Uh, let's see where it goes because the street is excited. Paytm is still holding up. Yeah, Paytm, actually, there are 25 lakh uh, pending right. buy orders. So, uh, you know, that's why we are unlikely to see any kind of downtick on that stock. So the buyers are in, in queue out there. But I think, Manglam, let's move on with the show. Let's get in our couple of managements. Let's do that. We have Jay Kumar Infra, which is on our radar after reported its fourth quarter numbers. The revenues of the company grew about 26%. The EBITDA, too, was high by about 27%. So good quarter, so to say. Important to know what the outlook for the year coming ahead is. Kamal Gupta, the managing director, has always 
joins us. Thanks a lot, Mr. Gupta, for joining in. You ended this year with an order book of close to 21,000 crores. Expected order book, what you had given us earlier, was uh, 25,000 by FY27. So let's put those uh, questions forth uh, to you first. What is your order inflow guidance for FY25 and what is your execution pipeline looking like? Yeah. Hi, good morning. So if you see this quarter itself, Q4, we have secured 3,750 crores of orders. And uh, on a year basis, like, you know, there's an inflow of uh, 11,800 crores. So taking our order book, as rightly told by you, to 21,000 crores. So our vision to be a billion dollar revenue company by FY27, I think we are right on the path. Uh, so achieving 25,000 crores of order book in FY27 doesn't look to be difficult now. Uh, this year has been uh, a record inflow for us, 11,800, and this gives us clear visibility for coming three to four x, uh, three to four years. Uh, looking coming for like, uh, sorry, uh, we are already L1 uh, in this month for 4,700 crores of projects. This includes a multi-model corridor from Virar to Alibag, costing 4,100 crores. Uh, so our guidance of if order inflow of six to eight thousand crores in FY27, uh, 25 seems to be realistic and we are very comfortable in achieving it. So we wanted to maintain an order book of almost 20 to 22,000 crores by year end of FY25, which is uh, very conservative and comfortable. Okay. All right. Uh, well, Mr. Gupta, good morning and uh, welcome to the show. You're look, sounding very, very optimistic about business. Uh, what about execution for the coming year? What kind of execution, what kind of margins for the current year? That's FI25. Uh, so we have been uh, continuously delivering a healthy margin of 14.2%. Uh, this year, uh, it has gone up by 0.2 basis up. So it's 14.4% EBITDA. And uh, we are hopeful like in uh, coming six to eight quarters, our margins will increase from 14 to 15% to 15 to 16%. And... Uh, the execution on all the projects are going very good. Even the projects what we have secured now in these years have been started. Uh, and like uh, we see a uh, revenue coming in from this from Q2 uh, and they will add significantly to the growth of uh, in revenue in uh, FY25. So, so mid-teens growth for this year with margins closer to around 15%. Are we getting that correct? Exactly. Right. You know, just uh, to back calculate some of the numbers, you said that you are expecting an order inflow of anywhere between six to 8,000 crores in this year, and your order book currently is 21,000 crores. You expect uh, order book at the end of this year to be about 22,000 crores. So by that measure, your execution this year should be around 6,500 to 7,000 crores. Can we expect that on the top line? So as we've given a guidance before also 15% growth, so I think we will go up to 16 to 17% growth in this year and uh, taking it to around 5,600 to 5,700 crores uh, of uh, net sales by FI25. Right. You know, recently there were some uh, RBI norms that came in for project financing. How does that impact your cost of uh, projects or, you know, your ability to raise funds? Would that be an impact? So it won't be impact to us. Uh, our debt as of now is only five. It's a 76 crores, which is 0.2x of, uh, so giving us suf uh, sufficient leverage. And uh, our interest cost is only eight to, uh, 9 to 10%. So uh, the impact of these RBI norms uh, is not on our uh, PNL account. All right, uh, Mr. Gupta, I just want to clarify that uh, multimodal route you were talking about that we're going to be working on is from, from Virar to? Alibag. Alibag, wow, beautiful. <laughs> Sounds like it's one of the ring road from Virat to Alibag, connecting the this thing, Vadudra Mumbai Expressway also, and oh. uh, through the JNPT. So it will be a very good connect. It'll be very good. You know, for those who want to go by road instead of the Roro as well, good. Maybe uh, Alibag's property price, I think, have been the biggest outperformers in the last many years. And uh, with this road, maybe, in fact, uh, you know, it could look even better. What is the timelines for this execution of this particular route? Three years. Three years. Okay. All, All right. right. Years, we'll uh, have to uh, think about it. The interesting <laughs> part is that, you know, those who are coming from Gujarat as well will have direct access to Alibag yeah. as against the others because they'll reach all the way to Virar, Virar and, then and go then straight away to, go to Alibag. Let's see how that pans out. Uh, you know, it sounds very exciting just uh, the way a lot of these uh, infra projects do sound exciting. And speaking about exciting infra projects, uh, metros, how much of it is pending and what's the execution timeline here? 
so metro all the projects are going very well uh, and like you know we are uh, and rather uh, this line 3 from kolaba to ships so phase 1 from ships to bkc mmrc is planning to start operations from july or august because work is almost completed and they are in their final league of taking approvals like fire noc the rdso approvals and uh, the chief railway commissioner's approval so that is in process so that will take around like in one and a half months so i think by uh, mumbai cars could enjoy this by july or august for sure that's the first phase uh, yeah that's the first phase of uh, line 3 underground and the second phase should be done by november this year okay okay so all right uh, finally final... by this year and yeah all right uh, mr gupta what is your exposure to maharashtra as a percentage of a total business so maharashtra as on now like looking to our order book of 21000 crores it compromises almost 65% in maharashtra 20% okay. in tamil nadu and the rest in like uh, up ncr and other places okay the reason i ask you is because you know this is one of the states where you'll have both the center elections as well as the state elections in a matter of 6 months or so so will that slow down the tendering the order booking do you see any sort of risk to the business so as uh, we are bidding pan india and as i told you what we have already secured the l1 in 4100 crore of project that is in maharashtra only so this all will be converted to order uh, much before the elections or state elections uh, kicks in so right. i don't think there should be and we have sufficient order book so uh, and on uh, national level central level the all the projects uh, will be like all the biddings will also be on all right that's interesting because uh, while nigel did speak about the central elections as well as the state elections uh, the one elections that haven't happened in uh, mumbai so far are the bmc elections for the last couple of years uh, that could happen uh, you know soon as well so just wanted your thoughts on the bmc contribution to your order book right now and were there to be fresh elections announced for the bnc anytime soon could that impact no so we have secured a considerable chunk from bmc uh, this year uh would it be like the gorega mulu link road which is uh, twin tunnel uh, compromising 7500 crores uh, in a jb so our share will be 3500 crores plus the uh, varsova daisar coastal road even uh, that is 2500 crore in jb so our share will be uh, 1300 crores and one orange gate uh, from uh, flowering is to grant road elevated so this is uh, a considerable component of bmc but all these projects orders are already been in and the project execution is already been started the mobilization all so because of the elections there won't be any slow down in these projects what we have secured though like we so these projects to... we are trying to figure out what happens afterwards so of course like uh, during the elections the uh, two months uh, period will be cooling off period so that time they won't be able to any finalize any further new contracts Okay all right uh, Mr Gupta thanks a lot for joining in you're sounding very very optimistic you know about the business and I'll tell you what when you were, the stock price was 200 250 rupees odd I recall you joining in you spelled out that you're going to be a billion dollar revenue company in the coming future as of now the path you've set it appears to be your own course and uh, you know share price aside as mumbai cars we want you to execute faster <laughs> you know it will make our lives a lot simpler so we're cheering on the execution front your shareholders and uh, you know they will be tracking all the numbers as well thanks a lot so for joining i am fully optimistic like you and if you see mumbai has been changing in coming 3 years as we have yeah. uh, joined this coastal road and the yes. tel sethu uh, and this metro network so i think it will be a boon for mumbai cars in coming 2 to 3 years all right uh, i just hope that uh, you know all of this construction does end at some point in time because since the time i think both nigel and i have been going to school we've all seen only construction activity happening with a lot of promise but we'll take that on board in the next 3 years hopefully mumbai does change and we see this as a boon for all of us no one will be happier more than us sir <laughs> take a short break come back on the other side we'll be joined by jayanta basu who's the managing director of itd cementation to discuss their quarter gone by Well, the next management on our radar is ITD Cementation. They reported a solid set of numbers, good growth on the top line, and uh, you know execution as well has been pretty good. To help us out with the, you know, how the things are panning out going ahead, we're joined by Mr. Basu, who's the managing director of the company. Hi, Mr. Basu. Good morning, and good to see you, Ben. I recall visiting your uh, office, you know, uh, more than a year ago, and you were sounding very, very optimistic. the share price at that point of time i think was around 130 140 rupees but you were saying nigel watch ex- execution 
And on that front, it's been quite good. So kudos to you. But just a couple of clarifications is what I want. You had guided for order inflow of close to around 8,000 crores. You've ended a little bit short of 7,000 crores. Why is that? Was it election related? Good morning, Nigel. Thank you for being here for this discussion. I think we are meeting almost after a year. Uh, yes, there will be some spillover because of the election. So we have secured around 6,800 crores of work last year. So yeah, there is some spillover because of elections. Okay. So in that case, uh, what are you targeting in this year itself in terms of order inflow? And I remember, you know, when you had joined us, you said that in FY24, you'll do 6,000 crore of revenue with 10% margins. Guess what? You've done a lot better. 7,700 crores of revenues with 10.5% margins. So on order inflow front for FY25 with revenue and margin, what are your targets? Well, uh, order inflow should be between nine to 10,000 crores. That is what is our target. And uh, there are a few jobs which are in pipeline, uh, which we are quite optimistic about them. Uh, we have submitted our bid and some we are being tendered. So close to nine to 10,000 crores should be the order inflow this year. Okay, what about execution, sir? Uh, you know, as Mangalam said, that you'll gone ahead, you'll promised a number, but you'll did better than that. What about margins? They move into double digits? Yeah, margin, as you can see already, I have told you last time that it will be close to double digit or more than that, that we have achieved this year, 10.48%. And we hope that this will be maintained a little bit more coming quarters. Okay. And execution, revenue, so margins at more than 11%. We're taking that on board with uh, a revenue of what for the coming year? You can expect a growth of 20% from this year. 20% over last year. So that would give you closer to 9,000 crores, 9,000, 9,200 odd crores, over 7,700 crores. We'll take that on board. And you know, the last time you had said that uh, the legacy orders that you had, which were low margin businesses, will be done with in the next couple of quarters. So just wanted an update on that. Are all the legacy orders out of the system now? All are behind us, all. So, which is what explains your optimism on margins. Uh, how much further can they go from this 10.5% to 11%? You said a little improvement is what you can see. How much more? See, it is not only legacy order. You are in a competitive market. So, whatever work you get, that also through competition. Mm -hmm. uh, so, there will be a pressure in that margin in that from that point of view. So, we are trying to go beyond our uh, battery limit of India domestic market, we are trying to go to overseas market where we okay. expect a little better margin. So between 10 to 11 percent, we expect this year. Okay, we are working with 11 percent, sir, because you said margins will improve gradually, legacy orders are behind. That's fair, right? Closer to 11 percent? Closer to 11 percent. Got it. What about your plans in the overseas market? You're executing projects, you know, I look at it in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh as well. So as a percentage of your total uh, business, what was it in the past year and how does it shape up going ahead? Now oh, our work in hand, uh, revenue-wise, last year I think we have done around uh, close to 800 crores out of 7,700 crores. But work in hand today uh, will be around 10% to 12% of total work in hand. Uh, we have from our market. So if you remember when Nigel, we have discussed last time, the target is yes. to go to 30% revenue from our market coming to three years time. So we still maintain that uh, target and we are working to achieve that. Yeah. All right. So from 10%, it increases to 30% of the next couple of years. That's the overseas business. Um, on uh, the big ticket projects, you have the Ganga Expressway, you have the Chennai Metro. What's the execution timeline here? They're all on schedule, particularly Ganga Expressway is going very good. Uh, I must say that, uh, you know, uh, we are supposed to complete by next year, February, March. And we hope that we'll be able to achieve that. Uh, Chennai Metro, initial, there was some delay because of the front was not available. Uh, but today, the tunnel, both the package tunnel have started. So it will be done on time. Okay. What about, your, uh, could you quantify how... You know, you said that the order pipeline is looking good. 
what is the what is the what is the L1 order book looking like? We per se we don't have L1, but you know we are working with a company like Port of Singapore, uh, Dubai Port, hmm. and AP Molar, Those who are our common, I mean, uh, customer. So we are quite hopeful that some of the big ticket job from these clients will be materialized very soon. Right, and uh, no worries on the royalty front yet, right? Because point half percent is what you pay. Point five percent. Uh, no, you I said think it is unlikely to. It'll be the same for this year at least, and the next year as well. When does it come for renewal? Yeah. Yes, yes. I think there, there is no possibility of changing the royalty amount quantity. All right, uh, Mr. Basu. Thanks for clarifying on that as well. Uh, we wish you and your team all the best for the coming year. Kudos to you on the execution front, on the order inflow front, where you fell a little bit short, but you're guiding for better times in FY25. So we'll hold you to all these uh, numbers. Margins are around 11%, revenue growth of close to around 10, uh, you know, 20%, and also order inflows of around 9,000 crores. Thanks a lot for joining in on CNBC TV 18. Well, for the time being, we'll slip into a short break. Come back, we'll continue our focus on the markets. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Even as we're seeing some pressure in the frontline indices, the mid-caps, a bunch of them are actually rallying hard. We have something like a jubilant food works, a big, big mover this morning. And it's not just this morning. If you just take a look at the stock for this week itself, you know, this up uh, morning, it's up around 4 odd percent. This week, it's up around 11 percent. It's done well for the delivery part of the business this time around as well. The fourth quarter numbers that came by told you that, you know, the LFL growth was a lot better than what the street was fearing earlier. And all of that was led by delivery. And as a result of which, it's outperformed the industry. So all those fears of market share erosion perhaps may have been unfounded for Jubilant Foodworks doing well. And we're also seeing an uptake come by for something like a Nippon Life. That one too, uh, from the red, has now moved into the green after recovering from the lows and currently at the high point of trade, Nigel. Yeah, add to the list, Gujarat Gas. That's hmm. another stock that's uh, spiked up the last few minutes. So I think we should get that one as well up for you on the screen. Well, as we uh, wrap up on this edition of Chartbusters, here's a quick note for all our viewers. A daily wrap of all the top headlines will hit your inbox. Before you call it a night, with CNBC TV 18 daily newsletter on LinkedIn featuring the top 10 stories on markets, corporate updates, economic insights, and financial highlights. So subscribe now and get the CNBC TV 18 Edge.